Have you ever wondered what sort of Android tablet you can get for $29.74 at Menards? Well, you can get this kind of tablet, a digital Android tablet by Sylvania. It looks really chunky there. Seven inches wide screen, case and keyboard included. Well, that might be worth the price of admission alone. What do you think, bud? Yeah, yeah that, that, I thought that's what you thought. Comes with all these Android apps. Wow. So this was actually listed at $34, but it rang up as $29. Either way, I was going to buy it. Whatever. The ProScan tablet offers you the perfect blend of work and play as my cat eats the receipt. Oh, who am I kidding? I'll never return this. A powerful quad-core processor delivers smooth performance while streaming videos. Oh, I'm sorry, when streaming videos. While a high-resolution touchscreen display produces brilliant imagery for a captivating viewing experience. Well, here's the tablet itself. You can see me recording in the background and Bud sneezed. Looks like there's a front-facing camera. It's a bit on the thick side, but it's not too bad. Oh, holy moly, an external micro SD card slot? Well, I think other companies could learn a lot from that. Wait, what is that port for? What is that? Oh, it looks like Bud found a box. If it fits, I sits. And anything on the side? Oh, all the controls are on this side. Let's see if it powers up. Oh, Android Go, what is that? Bud, you should Android Go away. Come on, boot. Is that box good? Yeah, well, I guess it's better that you b bite that than my furniture. It's still booting up. Well, I must say, the Sylvania watch booted much faster than this. And it's still booting. Maybe it takes longer to boot the first time. Although Google doesn't really boot very fast. Like my phone takes, I don't know, like a minute. Oh. Well, let's see. Hi there. Oh, yes, hi. Uh, the resolution isn't too bad. You can see the pixels, but, I mean, it has a better pixel density than, like, my iPad, too. Oh, can't let anyone see my password. All right, connected to Wi-Fi. The keyboard entry for the password was pretty crappy keyboard, I must say. This bezel is pretty large. What is that other port on the bottom? Oh, it's a headphone jack. I mean, I haven't seen one of those in so long. I didn't even know what it was. Well, what is that? Is that a, a separate kind of charger? It looks like micro USB and... Yeah, it looks like a charging port. Oh, look, and if I want to take it apart, convenient screws. Are the screws on the other side? No. Well, here. Oh, where's... It? Unbox therapy. Oh, yeah. Oh, I can copy all my apps and data from my other Google devices? Ah, uh, nah, let's start as a, let's get a fresh start. My uh, cat jumped up onto my back while I was kneeling over the couch filming this, and it was very painful. I yelled out the name of Jesus Christ, which is appropriate because now my back looks like Jesus Christ in that one Mel Gibson movie. Well, it's not very fast. I mean, it allegedly has a quad-core processor. Uh, let me guess, this, of course, the state of California. God, California. The state of California has determined that air can kill you because the state of California. I want to be, I want to be off the grid. Oh, the setup process is taking forever. What is my name? Well, here's the keyboard. Ben. Ben is my name. I was out in the garage all day working on a project, so my cat probably misses me. Which I guess is why it jumped up onto my back. Ah, uh, wow, look at all this stuff. Oh, let's try the gears. Wow, 80%. 80% of the battery will give me one hour and 52 minutes. That is not great. It's a capacitive touchscreen. I mean, I should have multi-touch. Yeah, I do, okay. Uh, yeah, this is kind of weird. Like, oh, that's the volume control? That's kind of weird considering they have a volume rocker on the side as well. Oh yeah, which version of Android is this? Let's take a look. Ah, man, that really hurt. I trimmed his nails just a few days ago. <laughs> Android 8. Okay, that's not too bad. I mean, $29. Come on. We should see what else is in the box. 
Apparently there's a keyboard. Oh, pretty nice packaging. Let's see. Huh? Okay, I take that back. Wow, look at this stuff. There's an instruction book, which is way longer than the instruction book. Hmm, one gigabyte, eight gigabyte. Oh yeah, how much memory is this supposed to have? Uh, probably doesn't say, which means one gigabyte slash eight gigabytes. What the heck? Oh, maybe it's one gigabyte of RAM and eight gigabytes of storage. That would make sense. So this allegedly is a keyboard. Oh, look at that. Oh, <laughs> it's a little USB micro keyboard. Oh, that was worth the price of admission alone. Look at that. That's so cute. What else we got? Looks like we got a micro USB for charging. Oh, never mind. This is how we charge it. It's a wall wart, and then it's got, yeah, that plug on the side there, which goes in like that. Well, that's strange. I wonder if you can even charge it via USB. Oh, look at this. This is so pimp. Let's set this up. Oh, look at me. I have the world's greatest laptop. Well, how's this? Well, how do you make this stand? Oh, this. Oh, here we go. Why go to a normal banana stand when we can make your banana stand? Oh, that's slot. Oh, that's. Oh, look at that. It's spring loaded. <laughs> that's not bad. That is not bad. I've seen worse things. I've seen movie reviews where they don't even mention the costumes. Well, I'm obviously ready to do some high power programming. Configure physical keyboard. I suppose I need to lower this. Oh, look, I got a haircut, see? Tap it twice. I love how it makes this big chunk whenever you do anything. Oh, I thought that said esoteric, but no, it's not. English US. That's me, yeehaw, bacon and trucks. Here's my old uh, Nexus, I don't know, 2013 Nexus. It's a little bit smaller, but it's also thicker than the Nexus, but that's not too bad. Oh, I got a notification. Oh, that's, see, that's kind of laggy. See that? <laughs> All right. Can we search for something? Come on. Uh, no, that's not the that's not the right orientation. Um, what? I don't need a Google account. Also. Why aren't you oriented the right way? Hmm, the amount of time this is taking to actually get to a Google prompt. What's Google Go? Welcome to Google Go. Uh, yes, Google Go. Could you go into the right aspect ratio, please? I mean, it's not super responsive. We've already lost 3% of battery life, but the time went up somehow. Not sure how that works. This keyboard, well, it's kind of bent. <laughs> If you can see that, it's kind of bent, but, you know, it's... Does it do anything? Can I, oh, yeah, I can move the arrows up and down. Oh, look at that. I can use the arrow keys to make it dimmer. And that's probably easier for you to see, isn't it? It's almost all the way down. I like these settings. Let's search for something. What does the Internet love? Ah, <sighs> why is it doing that? Oh, I, huh? Taylor... Swifter. Um, nothing showed up on the screen. Wait. Oh, no. <laughs> it's typing it in now. Whoa, this is like Google Duplex, you know? It's like doing my searches for me. More like Taylor Slow. Hit enter. Come on. Uh, what? What's it say? Can't connect to the keyboard? Hmm, this is not very promising. You may not have realized, but Chrome is just an empty white square on the screen. That's that's all you need to browse the web. Oh, there it is. Yeah, sure. Send all my personal data to Chrome. Sign. No, I don't want to sign into Chrome. This is weird. This is like, well, that's something like, is it like Android 8? Like the three things at the bottom? Because this would be how many things are open, right? Oh, man, that is slow. Look, I just want to find out about Taylor Swift, 
my favorite, uh, what, singer? Taylor, well, I, I don't even have to type anything else. Like, if I was trying to, like, fix my blue jeans and I typed in Taylor, well, for one thing, it's spelled differently. <sighs> it's weird. Like, to make this even look decent on the camera, I had to turn it so dark I can barely see it in person. Um, okay. Taylor, wait, is this the actual Taylor Swift? Taylor Allison Swift is a song singer. She's 31 years old now. Oh, wow, she's tall, five foot 10. I mean, again, it's $29, but it's not very responsive. What else we got? Oh, is there YouTube on here? Oh, that should be interesting. Oh no, we're about to see the horrors of unlogged in YouTube. If you ever wanna know what YouTube wants to become, Log into YouTube without an account and you'll see what YouTube wants to become. Oh man, it's taking so long to load. Okay, here we go. Let's see what YouTube wants to become. Playing with McDonald's toys, Boss Baby 2, Minecraft, discover more videos on YouTube. So I guess this is stuff I think everyone likes. Air Supply Greatest Hits. Well, I, I do actually like Air Supply. Frozen Sing Along, great. Rainbow Cookies. Cooking Rice, Sniper Wolf, huh? Sniper Wolf. Oh, the Dodo, okay, this is a channel I actually like because it's always showing like, you know, like animals that are like being rescued or something. So that's a cha channel I actually know about. Soothing Relaxation. Let's watch some cat, cat on memory foam, great. Let's see how long this takes to load. Well, the video itself loaded pretty quickly. Um, oh, they shot it in portrait. Oh, come on. This is not very indicative of what the video should be. Let's see. Apparently McDonald's is a big category. Yeah, that's not corporate at all. What? Shut up. Who are you? No. Why would I want my iPhone to be a Nokia phone? Oh, because millennials are obsessed with the past. Uh, children. Oh, shut up. Okay, here we go. Ancient pyramid construction on naked science? From the creators of Naked and Afraid comes naked science. And everyone's thinking that it's going to be like, what the heck is this? Is this what YouTube looks like to my 12 year old niece? It's just kind of stuff. I mean, oh geez, the videos, they run well enough. Speakers are terrible. How did they build it? Guess, I'm sure it was aliens. Remember when the History Channel was actually about history and not aliens and angels and well, I guess the Knights Templar were part of history. Wow, that thing's really big. Wow, they used a ramp? Wow, who would have thought? No, they used magic. Why would you do any of those things when you have UFOs bringing the blocks to you? Come on. Um, maybe this isn't the best video. The colors are fairly washed out. I'm sure it probably is only like a 565 um, color depth screen. You know, five bits of red, six bits of green, five bits of blue. I'm sure it's not full gamut. I'm going to type in AT Tiny and see how, how high my video is on the list. Hey, number one. Nice. Again, it's $29, but the screen quality is pretty poor. I mean, once you actually start watching videos and stuff. So there's uh, three. Shut up. Okay, if I type in AT Tiny, I get number three. That's still pretty good. Oh, bare metal MCU, AT Tiny 85 from scratch. It's always going to be bare metal. Well, this tablet. It's pretty laggy. I mean, things like YouTube actually work pretty well, which is kind of surprising, but just like, you know, trying to use like Chrome 
or typing anything in. I mean, they give you this keyboard, but it's still so laggy, which isn't the keyboard's fault. <sighs> yeah, apparently her real name is Taylor Swift. Um, let's look for sloths. Oh, sorry, there's paint on my hands. I was, well, painting something. Oh, the sloth is an animal. <laughs> okay, images of sloths. It's not my Wi-Fi. I have really good Wi-Fi. We have Charter. Like one of the least evil cable companies. I, I thought I clicked images. I don't know what this Google Go is or Android Go. Maybe it's, you know, it's probably a fork of it for like really low power devices, which this would be. Yeah, I don't know. It's weird. I mean, it, it performs okay when you're just like scrolling things around and watching videos. But anytime you try to type something or if I try to click on a video, it's going to be really, well, that wasn't too bad. Now that I've turned it on, it's time to take it apart. So there are two screws on the end. Hmm, kind of small screws. Oh, not too small for my old screwdriver, though. I don't even need my iFixit kit. This video is not sponsored by iFixit. They gave me an iFixit kit at a Maker Fair once. I use it a lot. It's good. Hmm, okay, so I removed the two screws. Now what? If I had to guess, I say that a lot, don't I? There's probably a tab on the back side of the unit going up here, and that's actually what holds it in place, so probably gonna need a splooger. Yeah, there it is. Yes. All right, so it should tab around the sides, yep. You ever watch that uh, iFixit guy on YouTube? He's like, I bought 100 dead Nintendo Switches. How many can I fix? He's pretty cool. Unlike an Apple product, I don't have to take this apart using a heat gun. Oh, wow, look at this high quality speaker placement held in place with Captain tape. Well, at least there's a disconnect. Oh, and there is a little bit of spacing foam on the speaker. Well, worst, worst case, I get a, uh, what? 2400 milliamp hour battery. Not a bad battery. See the Wi-Fi antenna here. So uh, why did I turn off my iron? I, I was just working on some uh, uh, PlayStation 4 accessibility controllers. Um, okay. Obviously, this is going to be your main arm, and that's going to be your flash, and then this is, well, it's going to be 256 megs of RAM on each chip since it's a total of one gig. I was looking into it. I, I did some research and um, I guess uh, Android Go is uh, basically a low memory version of Android 8. And the idea is it's for the next billion Android devices. Oh, this camera is terrible. Um, it's probably 320 by 240. It might not even be that high resolution. It's pretty bad. I, I took some test photos. Oh no, there's a couple screws there. Is there an insulation pad between the screen and the circuit board? Gee, I sure hope so. Wi-Fi antenna. This is, oh, that ribbon cable is probably doubled up. This is probably in place with adhesive. Yeah, if I had to guess. It's always a little sketch magetch and you're, you know, you have to desolder live batteries basically, but. Oh, don't touch, don't touch that, don't touch that. See, worst case, you know, well, look at this nice big battery, you know? Maybe get like a battery out of it, get a screen, although the screen's not very good. I think someone on my Twitter was saying, oh, you should hook that up to a Raspberry Pi. Why does everything have to be hooked up to a Raspberry Pi? I, sh I should get like a Pi 4. I haven't done anything with Raspberry Pi in years. I don't know, I just... I mean, it's cool and all, but, you know, it's just a ARM Linux thing. I I have more fun with, like, wimpier microcontrollers. Oh, well, that's perfectly safe now. I'm guessing this ribbon cable here is just folded over. 
this is just gonna be double-sided taped in place. It might seem cheap, but it's really no different than what Apple does. Come on. Oh, that's not good. I don't wanna bend it. Mm. Oh, I should probably get like a spatula from Spatula City. Spatula City! Ah, oh, that's taped in place too? Come on. All right, where's my Spatula City spatula? This is the spatula that came with the uh, Anycubic Pro Mega. It's actually a pretty nice spatula. Come on. Oh man, that's really glued in place. Did they expect this to be put into a hurricane or something? All right, I don't wanna cut the ribbon cable. Maybe I could give this to my niece as a cruel joke. Uh, she spends too much time looking at her phone anyway. I actually gave her that speak and spell from the speak and spell teardown video. Cause, uh, yeah. And you know what, I think she's a little too old for a speak and spell, but her uh, lack of spelling ability isn't. Wow, Ben must be the coolest uncle ever. Eh, maybe, maybe not. There we go. Man. Oh, I guess there was just two strips of it. Two strips of Beggin strips. Probably remove this tape. Although this would be this would be a really useful battery. Like you could put it inside something and uh 2400 milliamp hours is respectable. Oh wait, Wi-Fi antenna is gonna have two connectors. I'm not gonna mess with that. It's got uh, outer, it's got an outer wire and then a stinger in the middle. It's weird how they got this little circuit board over here going to the uh, screen. I, I assume, well, yeah, actually, I don't have to assume. This is going to be the digitizer for the touch screen. And then that's going to actually run the LCD itself. So this should pop right out. I mean, there's not much in it. Uh, is this glued in place? No, it's, it's got one screw. How generous of them. I mean, there's not much to it. If I, if, <clears throat> I always say, if I had to guess, Probably got a touchscreen controller and then probably like a memory controller and then probably an external Wi-Fi chip. Then, uh, oh look, there's some there's some writing on this. One gig plus eight gig eMMC, which that means the flash. Uh, okay, well, the sticker does not interest me, the chip does. Is there, well no, there's gotta be at least insulation on the back of the circuit board. Wow, they're using three whole screws. No? Uh, Oh yeah, there's insulation layer. Wow, there's not much to it. So there's like a tiny little speaker right there. A lot of test points, that's cool. It's kind of weird, like, um, well, I suppose they could nestle these on the board, but you know, they've got this little piece right here and all it does is connect it to the LCD, which means this is, well, this is probably at least, at least a four layer board. If you think about all the density going to the LCD, like how you're gonna fit it through that little channel there. And if you look right there, that little jubby, I would bet dollars to donuts, that's your LCD uh, boost voltage converter. Uh, a lot of times these LCDs, um, they'll actually require like 21 volts just for the LED backlight. Okay, it's a plastic cover on it, so it's not as fancy as that Sylvania smartwatch. It feels more like, it feels more like the Switch, although it's not, doesn't feel quite as cheap as the Switch. I'm sure, I wonder if the Switch was, I wonder if they made a plastic to make it cheaper or because kids. I mean, this is a, I wonder if I could use a screen for something else. I mean, again, it's not a very good screen, but pretty standard connector on it. I have adapters like that. Well, I very easily found the data sheet for the main chip, the rock chip, so we'll look th at that on screen capture. As far as this is concerned, I don't think I'm gonna bother taking it apart further than this, um, because I don't know, maybe you could reuse it as a touch screen for like a pie. I mean, you know, it's decent. Didn't have any luck with this number, but by typing in uh, that number, I actually found, well, Actually, yeah, they have this screen. It's in Spanish. It's a weird site I've ever heard of, like Articulo. And uh, they also they have the LCD, and they also appear to have the digitizer itself, because in the photo on my computer, it looks just like this with the thing coming out the bottom. So I guess you just, like, roll your own tablet. It's calling it, like, Touch Tactile Vidriro Tablet Kanji Ashio. So, yeah, I don't know. Maybe this is, like, some kind of, like, generic tab. Well, it's obviously very generic. 
you know, and then Sylvania would just stick their logo on it. I think I have this uh, flex adapter here. Yeah, da, 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 da. Set a match, 0.6 millimeter pitch. Looks like it. Yeah. All right, and as you can see, it says, yeah, it's actually just over 40. It's like 42 pin connector. Yeah, I probably have a header like that someplace. Seems like something Felix would have bought. And he would have been like, shut up, Mr. Olmstead. Inside joke. Where did I get this? Adafruit? I, haven't even, I don't even know where this came from. Oh, what was it say? 0.5 millimeter pitch? I don't think that's the pitch. And second inspection, yes, it's a 0.5 millimeter pitch, 50 pin connector. So if I had the connector, or I could just order one, I could solder up to this board and then I could wire this directly into a Raspberry Pi and do a direct 24-bit uh, drive. I would just have to change the device tree file, which I've done before. It's been a couple years, but I think I remember how to do it. Okay, there's the boot screen. I've got this hooked up to my scope. <clears throat> I'm wondering if we could like find some of the signals here. I mean, we've got all these test pads. I'm gonna see if I can see anything. Oh, there's something right there. What is that? So we got like a, what, a blue screen? Black screen? <laughs> the contrast ratio is so poor, I can't tell. I was looking, there are screens kind of like this from Inolux, although that's way too fancy of a brand for a tablet like this. Those are LVDS, low voltage differential signaling. All right, well, there's our boot screen. It's mostly blue. It's blue, da da do da do da blue blah, blah, blue blue. <coughs> What is that? Oh, that's gotta be the pixel clock. What else could it be? Come on. Wait, oh, did I, did I lose it? Oh, it turned off. Come wake up. There we go. Oh, I guess I went to sleep. 60 megahertz. Yeah, that sounds like a pixel clock to me. I'm gonna look for H-Sync and V-Sync. Oh, what's that? <clears throat> ah, it turned off! You're driving me crazy, Lisa! Oh, that looks like uh, Active Pixel. Um, I bet if we zoom out, we'll see a V-Sync. Yeah, that's gotta be the Active... Oh, darn. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, see how there's a big gap? So that's gonna be the V-Sync, and then this is gonna be the uh, Data Enable Active Pixel flag for each line. Um, yeah, like if you look at like this pixel here, well, that's not the best example. There we go. Now, if we pause this on the scope, you can see how there's a big gap, you know, every line, and then there's a big gap every frame. So that tells us this is pixel data because the pixel data is not gonna be valid uh, unless the, um, what do you call it, the, uh, the data enable line. Oh yeah, I guess I should say LCD is like this. So if it's a, uh, if it's CTL, that means there's up to eight bits of RGB each. That's 24. Then there's eight sync, V sync, data enable, and then um, what's the other one? Oh, pixel clock. Right. Yeah, most of these pins here should probably be color. And you know, I have seen what looks like a color signal on most of them. So I mean, if we had to guess, like this thing is probably no more than 18 bit color. Alexa, what is two to the power of 18? 2 to the power of 18 is 262,144. That makes sense. I've seen that number mentioned on some of the uh, Russian <laughs> data pages about this. Of course, I can't find the actual pin out. It's just always like, oh, here you can order one. I think I'm going to mark these off, all the ones where I find uh, pixel data. Man, I guess I'm just trying to, you know, process of elimination where isn't the H-Sync, V-Sync. I don't know why they wouldn't have that and one of their convenient uh, test points. I will say one thing about this crappy Chinese crap. Redundant. That's like triple redundant. Um, well, that's not true. They make good things in China. They also make a lot of crap. Um, it often has a lot of test points. <laughs> like, if you remember that crappy watch from Menards? That thing had a lot of test points. I could have uh, very easily hooked it up to a JTAG, although I didn't want to bother. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Okay, hey, that makes sense. Eighteen pins. Um, 
18 bit 666 RGB. You like how I just assumed the color density of this lap of the screen is bad? Well, I didn't really assume it, I, I saw it with my eyes. I'm not that colorblind. I'm not that innocent. <clears throat> wow, I never thought Ben would quote Britney Spears. You thought wrong. Whatever happened to Britney Spears? Remember when Britney Spears was like the top search result on uh, Yahoo and Google for like 10 years? She isn't that innocent after all. Oh, <gasps> Selena Gomez said hell. Oh my gosh, so edgy. It's possible they didn't uh, pin that out at all. Like maybe, I mean, I couldn't find it on the test point because there's obviously not 50 test points. Because if it's like most, it's probably like the sync, you know, L-sync pixel data. Shut up, cat. The <laughs> So if this is like most 50 pin ribbon cables, it would be, uh, you know, H-Sync, V-Sync data, enable pixel clock, then all the colors, and then the uh, LCD backlight. I guess we could flip it around and poke it from the front. You, I suppose you're programmed for protocol and etiquette. Yes, sir, I am programmed for protocol and etiquette. I don't need no darn protocol droid. Excuse me, sir. It's I don't need any protocol droids. <gasps> You do sound useful after all. I'll take it. Oh, man, this thing kind of, uh, as I would say, it definitely semiconducts. Ooh, that's that's pretty warm. I don't have my uh, IR thermometer because it's up in my kitchen. It serves two purposes. It allows me to take the temperature of my uh, Dutch oven, and also I can use the laser pointer to distract my cat, who is probably outside the door right now. He's probably like, meow. Kit. Oh, the screen says Bluetooth keeps stopping. I had no idea it even started. Bluetooth, that's not bad. It's probably part of the uh, uh, Wi-Fi chip. And I can find that enable. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I have one of those microscopes now. I don't know why I'm not using it. I guess I'm a Luddite. I grabbed a random pinout from the internet of a 50 pin parallel RGB TFT connector. And yes, it has data enable on pin nine, which this one is showing. But if that's the case, we should see vertical sync and horizontal sync right after it. They should all be clumped together. The pixel data is starting where I would expect it to, which is this is 9, 10, 11, aren't showing me anything, and then 12 is valid pixel data. So that matches the data sheet, it's just that HSync, VSync aren't right after data enable, which is a bit weird. You know, the only thing I can think of is maybe it's using the data enable as some sort of composite sync, because, you know, you see it. You know, you see data enabled and it is disabled, and that would be, you know, each line. And then every, uh, every frame, there's what you'd call like, well, kind of like a back porch. Well, I think uh, decoding that LCD cable is probably beyond the scope of this video since it's supposed to just be about taking apart cheap crap from Menards. But let's look at the uh, main chip, the Rock chip, RK3126C. Ooh, I, mean, I was able to find this data sheet easy. Oh, blah, 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 microprocessor, memory organization, video codec, okay, JPEG codec. Actually, let's jump right to that. Uh, oh, yeah, I can do all sorts of things. So that's probably why uh, YouTube ran okay. We got H.264. That's pretty cool. Up to 1080, which the screen is not. Oh, yeah, here's some of the, the things we were talking about. Uh, RGB, yeah, so it's four bits per pixel, five, five, six, five, eight, eight, eight. And hey, I have no idea what that is. That's weird. 10 bits per pixel? I guess, yeah, I guess that's what that would be. Hmm, okay. Okay, quad core ARM Cortex AM7 MP core, high performance, low power. Oh, low power as in <laughs> electricity. <laughs> it's also kind of low power. <laughs> let's, let's be honest. Blah, blah, blah. EMMC, that's what it's using for its flash memory. The, uh, eight gigs. 
Uh, I wonder how fast they're running it. I mean, it says 24 megahertz, but there's going to be a phase lock loop bumping that up. It's probably, oh, I don't know, maybe like one gigahertz. Oh, here we go. Let's see. Supports up to five megapixels. All right, eight bits. C. Uh, I'm not sure. Point six five. Eight bits. Oh, look, it could do like NTSC out. Eight bits parallel interface. That's what we were looking at with the. Um, uh, let's see, LCD or TFT. It's kind of redundant. Parallel RGB LCD interface. Uh, yeah, eight 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 six six six, which is what I believe it's using, and five six five. Four display layers. Oh, one background layer, one video layer, Win Zero. Oh, this is kind of like the uh, the Game and Watch. You could actually have different uh, color depths per layer. Uh, let's see, scaling, alpha blending, transparency. One video layer. Oh, that's just another layer. Looks like they're mostly the same. Uh, oh, it's got a four-bit controller for the SD card. That's good. That's you know the faster version of it. I to C controller. That's probably how it's communicating with the uh, touch screen. General purpose input output USB host 2.0 on the go 2.0. That's fine. I wonder what this chip costs. Probably not very much. <laughs> well, it would still have the ARM license, of course. It's important to remember ARM, you know, the Advanced Risk Machine, which is an acronym within an acronym, so that'd be Advanced Reduced Instruction Set Computer Machine. Um, you know, ARM, which I guess is owned by NVIDIA now, ARM doesn't actually make hardware. They license out their core to other hardware companies. So they're kind of like, well, I wouldn't even say they're fabulous. Fabulous is like AMD where they don't own their own fabs, unlike Intel. They, you know, have like rock chips, like, hey, we want to use your ARM core, and then they license it. So it was fun to look at. I think what I'll do is maybe in a future video, I'll see if I can get that screen to interface with the Raspberry Pi. But just for now, I thought it'd be cool to, you know, see what's inside of a $29 tablet. I wouldn't recommend this tablet. I mean, I think you could spend like $80 and get a much more responsive like Amazon Fire device. But as I, as I, as when I looked it up, yeah, Android Go, as I mentioned, it's meant for really wimpy Android devices. And it seems like a big part of it is like, hey, this is for developing nations, right? Where, you know, a cell phone is probably going to be your only computer. Although that's true for a lot of people in developed nations, uh, yeah, but uh, but when I looked up Android Go, they actually talked about that a lot, how it's actually, it's intended for, you know, emerging markets, you know, which is another politically correct way to say it. Um, that's why I don't, I, I don't know if it was in the video, but when you, when I booted it up, it, the, one of the first things it talked about was bilingual support. And the idea is as people in, oh, I don't know, Africa, like I guess Africa is a whole continent. All right. Uh, people in Bolivia, I know that's nowhere near Africa, right? <laughs> Bolivia. What's a, what's another country? Because Africa isn't a, isn't a country; it's a continent. Uh, oh, how about the People's Republic of Congo, right? Or no, wait, is it the People's Republic of Congo or the People's Democratic Republic of Congo? Let me look that up. Yes, it's the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Okay, all right. So let's say you live in a place where you know you don't have much internet and you don't have much money. Android Go is actually made for those emerging markets, and that's one of the reasons why it talked about uh, being bilingual in the setup menu. I, I might have skipped over that in editing, but the idea is it's like, oh, English is the language of the Internet. So by making the tablet bilingual, we can make it easier for your people to interact with the Internet, even though English may not be their native language. Of course, some people might say, oh, that reeks of colonialism, but I'm just saying that's what the intention with Android Go is. So I would say, you know, if you're like me and you see a $34, which is actually a $29 tablet at Menards, I mean, obviously I have to look inside of it. Um, but for general purpose use, I mean, uh, it's so slow. But I guess if you were someplace where the internet was slow, you might not notice. But I mean, I, well, I, it's, I don't think it's the internet that's slow with that tablet. It's just everything else about it. But yeah, it was fun to look into. And if you think about it, you know, I got, I got a USB keyboard, right? And uh, an LCD screen. And a battery. So, you know, if you bought those things separately, you'd be way over $29. So it's kind of a win. It's almost like the parts are worth more than the sum of the whole. I guess that happens a lot of times, you know, like if you tear apart a car in a junkyard. 
All right, well, um, yeah, maybe I'll revisit hooking up that screen in a future episode. But uh, yeah, I guess we'll see in the next video. Uh, I'm still working on my Game & Watch uh, game. I'm programming kind of like an LCD-style Tapper clone into it. So I'll probably have that up in a week or so. So yeah, I guess we'll see you in the next video. And hey, and if I see anything else at Menards that I can't resist buying, I'll definitely buy it. Catch you in the next one.